directed by Carlos Hageman and Jorge Villalobos. And they are our, net, uh, our speakers tonight. So I'm gonna go and directly introduce them to you and then we will open the floor for them. So a little sharing about them. Give me one second because I, I lost the connection with the website, but give me one second and I will read to you about Jorge and Carlos. Sorry. <laughs> Here we are. So about Carlos and Jorge. Director and producer Carlos Hagerman was part of the team of directors of Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu's production company before opening his own company where he was produced and direct, uh, where he has produced and directed award-winning documentaries like Those Who Remain, IDA Humanitas Award 2009, Back to Life, and No Place Like Home. He also co-produced Plaza de la Soledad, Sundance 2013, and Rush Hour in 2018. He's a founding partner of Brinca Animation Studio. Director and producer Jorge Villalobos work as writer, director, and producer of animated and live action projects. He directed several children's series for Canal 11, Mexico's public TV channel. His animated and fiction short films have won over 20 international awards. Since co-founding Blink Animation Studios in 2012, Jorge and Carlos have worked as a team, co-producing and co-directing animation projects for children, as well as a communication tool for human rights organizations like UNICEF, and the Mexican Human Rights Commission. So this is our amazing uh, guest tonight, um, Carlos and Jorge, and I will leave the, the floor to them so they can start sharing about this amazing uh, piece that you have seen. Thank you, Carlos and Jorge, please use the space. Hello, I am Carlos Hagerman from Mexico. And I am Jorge Villalobos in Mexico, too. And uh, we have been friends for over 30 years. And uh, we have been partners in the animation studio Brinca for the last 11 years. And well, the this first story you just saw is, uh, is the first chapter of our feature film called Home is Somewhere Else, which um, was born because we wanted to use animation as a tool to talk about uh, sensitive issues as the fear of your family being separated because of uh, your migratory status. And we wanted to talk about the stories. Uh, well, we wanted to, to tell the stories from a different uh, angle. Uh, so that's why we thought that animation can make these kind of stories a little bit more um, accessible to the, to the audiences. From, from the moment that we started Homey Somewhere Else, we knew that we wanted to make this documentary an animentary, so it's a fully animated documentary. What makes it a documentary is that everything that you hear comes straight from conversations with these families. Um, so that we didn't write a script for these stories. We just spend a lot of time with these three families and we recorded our conversations with the protagonists and we used those audios uh, from those conversations and we edited those conversations in order to tell the whole story as you saw it in Jasmine's piece. And um... Jasmine's stories is the first story that we 
uh, that we discovered, the first family we met. Um, I was living in, in Miami about five, six years ago. And living there, I, I was able to see closer these kind of stories of uh, American kids, kids that were born in the United States, but with undocumented parents. And even though they were American citizens, they lived with this fear of coming back home in the evening and maybe uh, finding their, their parents were not there, that they, they had been deported. So this kind of story uh, moved us. We decided we wanted to talk, to, to tell these stories, to share what these families are living, uh, not just because we, we thought it was important to, to tell, but we also knew that it was important to hear these stories from the child's perspective, from, from their own, own point of view, because generally these kind of stories are told by the adults, by the people who decided to, to go from their countries and, and, and look for a better life in another country, even though they are taking a big risk. But usually the, the kids are not uh, questioned if they want to, to make these trips. So we wanted to tell the stories from their point of view. And that's why uh, we began looking for a family with this um, same characteristics. And, and when I was, as I said, in, in Miami, I had the chance to meet Jasmine's family, um, Laura and Ivan, her parents. And the three of them were very generous. They, they liked the project that we wanted to do. And, and that's where this project started with uh, a first conversation with Jasmine where she told us all the story that you just heard. And when we discovered that this combination of her, of the voice of the protagonist with a, an animation style that represents the personality of, the, of, the, of our protagonists turned out into something very powerful. And well, that's like the starting point of this, of this project. I think it's important for you to know that uh, although this is a feature film, so this is an 87 minute film, it is told in the structure of a storybook, in this case, a story film, where you have three separate stories of three different families. Today, we just saw the first story that its, uh, its protagonist, uh, Jasmine was 11 years old the first time that Jorge interviewed her and their, uh, her family, but we continued for a number of years talking to them. Uh, the second story is, is a story called uh, the, A Tale of Two Sisters, and this will be in, the, in September, this would be the story that you would see if you continue the series. And in October, you would see the third stories. Although these are three separate stories, we conceived the feature film uh, as, as one big story that would tell a big spectrum of the experience of living with fear of separation in different ages, with different styles and different uh, complexities. So by the end, you would get a full story of what it feels. And something that was very important for us when we began uh, uh, editing and visualizing and thinking how to tell the story was that uh, Carlos and I, as directors of the of the film, we wanted like to like to take like one step back in, in the sense of not being uh, visible or, uh, or our voice heard in the movie. We didn't want like to make a movie where we are giving our opinion of what this situation feels like. We knew it was very important that everything that it was, that is told in the, in the movie, everything you hear, comes from what are th these families wanted 
to share. Um, so that's why this process was more like a, like a conversation between the three families. Uh, it was not like an interview in the sense of a news reporter that goes and, and asks like very concrete questions and and then he makes his he shares his point of view but we like let the conversation take the direction that the families wanted and we knew that we if we did that this the connection with audiences not only that have lived this kind of situations but with audiences that doesn't know very good that this is happening would be more honest and more emotional because you're not hearing um, about the political context. You are not uh, listening uh, how many immigrants or when are they are traveling or you're not you're not reading like statistics about these issues. You're just like it's like if you are seeing a slice of life of these families. That's what we wanted to make more an emotional connection um, to generate. And we knew this from the from the beginning, from the start, when we were planning to do this movie, that we wanted to generate empathy. And I think this is empathy is like one of the key words of or and like the kind of the spirit that guided all through the production of this movie. And we also knew that we wanted to make this film uh, in the animated form, because we also thought that this film could become a tool for teachers at high school level, university level, so that uh, it could be used to raise questions between students, especially young students, teenagers and young adults, in the moment that they are creating their social identity. Because we think that if you have the experience of these families and you don't live this kind of experience yourself, you might be aware after watching the movie when you see these immigrant families in the context that you live in and have a different approach to that reality. But also we wanted for the community, the immigrant com community to have this kind of representation, a representation that is dealing with families that love each other, with families that want to stay together, and with families that want to, to make worth the opportunity that they're given in a different country than, than, the, than that of their own. That's why at the end of the movie that you haven't seen, we dedicated the movie not only to the families that search for a new home, to develop themselves, but also to the families that welcome them in their, in their country. And I think that this is very important that we can put this film uh, in places that it can affect not only um, audiences that would be interested in these uh, social issues, but in schools that would be interested in sending this message to their students and having to process these messages in the classroom where they can ask questions, where they can relate to the student that may be sitting next to you that would be represented by this film. Uh also uh, something that was very important for us and that it's something that is happening in the next session when we're going to talk with uh, one of the protagonists of the film was to maintain uh, contact with with the families who appear in the film uh, we did it since the 
since we started production, we, we just not only uh, went to their homes and recorded our conversations and then uh, say, say goodbye and so that we could go to the editing room and make the, the movie, but we knew it was important to make them part of the whole process. So in this sense, uh, during the production of, of the drawings of the animation, we were in a constant uh, communication with the families, asking them uh, specific details of the color of some things or how was a specific place, or, or, or sometimes we shared some uh, drawings to see if they, they uh, agree, if it was accurate, because even though everything is a drawing and everything is created from the imagination of the storyboard artists and the animators and the art team we all we always wanted that all this imagery was grounded in the facts of real life so we made the the families the three families part of this process and later and what i was saying that you're going to see in the next session we are trying to make a Lalo, especially, who, who is a, a filmmaker himself and an activist and an, a poet. And Evelyn, who also, uh, she, she lives in, she's in, I think she's in Mexico now, to make them part of these conversations. So with, with Jasmine's family, sometimes communication is a little bit harder. But we try, whenever it's possible, to invite them to these conversations, because sometimes uh, Carlos and I can talk about the what we wanted to do about the uh, the experience of making the film about the process about what we have uh, lived but I think that what Lalo or Evelyn in a specific can can share about these stories is something that they they they're the only ones can do it because they have lived what you see in the screen and we hope we can continue with this collab collaboration uh, for a long time. And if we continue making these kind of screenings and presentations, as Carlos was saying, in schools and in universities, when it's possible and we can invite them to be part of this uh, Q&A, so this conversation, I, we think it makes richer the, the experience of after seeing the film. I don't know, Adriana, if you want to open this for a Q&A session. Yes, yes, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I think, I mean, as you could see, uh, maybe Carlos, I don't know if you want to share more about how the approach was more about empathy. Would that, would that was it? Is there is something more specific or we open right now? Well, for us, the objective of making this film was to create empathy. And for us, empathy means to understand, to put yourself in the shoes of the other. Um, this is very difficult to do. Uh, first of all, because we are not immigrants that have gone through these experiences. We are just storytellers that are helping the protagonists of these stories tell the story in their own words. Um, but what we thought is that anybody could relate to a subject matter of family separation. If you are afraid that you're going to be separated from your family, you fear, in constant fear, and this is invisible to others. So if this film can help make it visible for others, I think that this feeling of living in fear is something that is inhuman for any society in any country. And although we know that we are talking in the context between Mexico and the US, migration is the central theme in the world today. And mobility is something that is changing our world today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos and Jorge. This is great. 
uh, Annie, I don't know, and Jorge and Carlos, what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, people open the mic and ask their questions, or do you want us to read the question uh, in the chat? Whatever you prefer. Um, this is, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 Annie. What were you going well, to say? I was going to say, speak for myself, that the film. This is the second time watching the first story. That I feel a lot of. Um, gratitude to you all for making this in such a way that I could be moved as somebody who's not having that experience could feel a little bit of that experience um, of that fear that you talked about, like that moment on the beach where the parents disappear and she's left alone, that feeling, to be able to touch that feeling even for a moment to know this is kind of feeling that a child could feel because of this problem that we have in this country and a lot of countries, but this country. And that um, I'm just grateful for, you know, being able to touch that because as we heard from the quote in the beginning, this is what motivates us to be able to do something different and to make change. And so thank you. I just wanna say that I felt that that came across. Um, and I would thank love you. to, go ahead. Thank you, Andy, for that comment. and. And in order to explain that sequence in particular, I think that uh, this is where the power of animation in, in, is used in storytelling. When, when we interviewed Jasmine, uh, she mentioned this sequence of going to the beach to have a picnic with her family. And she was just uh, telling us this anecdote as you know, as an everyday activity. But then she said something that caught our eye. She said, suddenly the wind started to blow very hard and it started blowing our things from the picnic. And then she said something that made us, you know, pay attention. She said, and it seemed that we were the only family that the wind was affecting. And then Jorge and I got together and, and why is she saying this this way? Why is, so this, is, this means that there were other families in, in that beach having a picnic as well. And she felt that this was only happening to them. And in that expression, for us, it was this fear ex expressed. And, and then we created all this sequence. And at the beginning, it's over uh, as a reenactment. And she even said, and we, and we, and it seemed that this wind was only affecting us. But then, as we develop the whole uh, sequence in animation, at the end, we thought it was a stronger to take out the voiceover and let the audience just feel what, what actually she was trying to say in her anecdote. But it all comes from this, uh, from the, her telling us this anecdote in the way she told us, and we just made an interpretation to underline this fear. Thank you, thank you, Carlos. And I don't know if someone else wants to, to, to I don't know, make a comment or ask a question to the director. I also want to acknowledge that we have another of our speakers on immigration or the uh, or connected. So thank you so much, Brenda, for being here. It's so important for us to have all our speakers coming always together. She has been an, an amazing a speaker for immigration. So I don't know who else wants to open its mic. Someone wants to start. If you don't want to speak out loud, you can uh, write a question at the chat and then we can read it and then we can answer. Yes, Brenda, please. 
open your mic. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfecto. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for your film. Um, I really love the conversation around sympathy. I think we're, you know, like, especially like in the work that I do, I feel like, you know, at one point, maybe we were doing a lot of that, but now it's just like, you know, here are the facts and the figures of, you know, like this issue. Um, so I really love that you brought, you know, like sympathy. I really love that. Like we need that. We need more of that again. And also as somebody who has been involved in immigration movement, you know, since I was 15, this is the second time that I watch um, this film and like, it's just so beautiful. And there is like a couple of scenes that ever since I watched it the first time, like those scenes just like stuck with me because of like the, the visual and the feeling um, without needing, you know, like any words. So I really, I really appreciate this format. Um, but yeah, I, I really love the film. I don't really have a question. Uh, just wanted to say, you know, like the, that the work is beautiful. Thank you very much, Brenda. Gracias, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. And everyone, if you just want, because I know it's a strong uh, film to watch, if you don't have a question, but you want to share, how do you feel after the movie? Please be, feel free and just open your mic. Also, we have a comment um, from Sheila in the chat saying this was such a powerful film. Thank you for explaining how it came about and your method. The feelings of empathy were very strong for me and you show how important it is to show representation. Seeing the story through the eyes slash voices of the family was very effective. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Adriana, I have a question. If yeah, that's sure, okay. Nigel, please go on. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for the film, very powerful. And as you know much better than me, it lodges itself in a debate in this country which has become so politicized and doesn't move forward because it's politicized. I was on the march, it became politicized. You talk about, mm, using seeing the movie being used in high schools in universities addressing young people but even there my fear is only some schools will use it only some states will permit it to be used in classrooms so have you given thought for how this beautiful powerful story that actually speaks to all of us can first of all, not get stuck in that political trap. And secondly, be used to depoliticize the debate and look for the solution that works for everybody. Thanks. Well, Nigel, thank you so much for uh, such a good question and a complicated one to answer. Um, I think that, well, I know that a film doesn't change reality, uh, but a film can change some people and some people can help change reality. Um, so our bet is that if this film is used in a university, and this university likes what it, the film does, that then we'll have more people interested in using this film. We are doing, we, we will start next month, what we call Between Dos Mundos tour of the film. Uh, in September, we'll be in Texas. In San Antonio, we'll be at uh, University of Texas in San Antonio. Uh, speaking to the Department of Communication students. And from there, we'll go to Trinity uh, College, uh, which is a fine arts college, also in San Antonio. And uh, from there, 
we will also do a screening in a community organization. Uh, in October, we already are being, are being booked in Tucson, Flagstaff, to have screenings at the University of Arizona and the University of Northern Arizona. And uh, so what we are planning to do, I know it's a very ambitious project, is doing this tour and going state by state, city by city, you know, making this movement as we go along. It, it, it has already happened that since one school has heard about this, they tell another school and then we, we've been starting to get, you know, uh, interest of, of these uh, of other schools and universities will be at the Bronx in a high school also in September. And, uh, but also we are talking to the AFT, to the American Federation of Teachers in order for them to have the film available at a certain point for their members. They have more than 3 million uh, teacher members in the US. And we are also having next month uh, screening at the Congress Visitor Center at the Capitol Hill in Washington. Uh, and this screening will be uh, sponsored by Congresswoman Veronica Escobar. And they are trying to push the Dignity Act reform for the immigration law. So this is as far as we can go as storytellers. But I think that we are pushing it and we feel that we are getting somewhere because we started doing exercises in Canada. We, we, we were in 87 schools. Uh, and now in France, we, we, are, we are being uh, also in, a, in 16 cities so that they would have school uh, screenings. And Greece has uh, also uh, expressed uh, their interest in going to the school program. So I think that this is a, a snowball that it's starting to roll. And we're just confident that one day this will be a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And uh, we're going to keep on pushing it, but we know that the limits of this have also to do with our own human limits. And uh, hopefully this will create enough noise that the film would be available to a wider audience in, in, in different platforms. But so far we are doing all this effort to have it out there. And of course, if you have any relationship with a university or an educational institution, that you might think that would be interested in using this as a tool for their teachers. We have developed a guide for teachers, uh, a 39 page guide for teachers in order so that they can aid them how to use this film as a tool in their classroom. Thank you. Someone else who wants to talk or, or have a, a, a comment? It looks like Aranza put something in the chat, a question, mm -hmm. and then I see Susan has her hand up. So we can maybe start with the chat. Mm -hmm. um, could you as artists expand more on how to make work that relates to your identity? In this case, your Mexican identity, but does not necessarily closely represent your own personal experiences. How can you maintain authenticity while telling the story of others, stories of others, or a large part of your culture? Okay. Yeah, th thank you for, for the question, Aranza. Um, I think that one thing that was uh, like uh, a key element of, of representing something that we haven't lived in the same way, even though Carlos and I maybe have some experience of being an immigrant, but not, I think, in the dramatic way as all these families have lived. So um, we, what we did from the beginning was just to be very 
to put a lot of attention and, and to listen very carefully to what these uh, families were telling us. And, and also we knew that, um, as I said uh, before, we, 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 did, we didn't want like to give an opinion. Um, in the beginning, when we were uh, finishing like the editing, when we already had the three stories and we were figuring out how to make the movie more to feel like a whole uh, motion picture and not just as three separate stories, we had one idea at the beginning that was like to invite maybe a famous writer and intellectual or a, from someone from the academy or someone who has studied these issues and ask him or ask her to write something about uh, migration or about deportation and later to ask maybe an actor or a public figure to read these um, texts so that this make would 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 work like a, a conductive element of the movie and then that's when we discovered that if we did that we what we were doing was like to make like to make an i don't know what's the exactly word in english like editorializar like to make yes like an external point of view about what these families were lived and then that's when we discovered and I think that's one of the uh, best things we we did with this film was we knew Lalo. We, we had already uh, worked with his story and we knew he was a poet and, he, and we knew how eloquent he was about the situation. So we asked him, why don't you write these poems that tell, uh, like that, that work as an introduction for the movie, but also as an introduction for each one of the stories, because Lalo has lived what the three families, I mean, he has, he lived what Jasmine lived when he was afraid about this situation. And then uh, he lived what uh, Evelyn and El Elizabeth that you're going to see, he lived the same story. So he understood perfectly in a very emotional, but also in experience level, what it felt. So when he, he wrote these poems and Carlos and I listened them for the first uh, time, it was like this very, we had chills all over our body because we knew had he, he had found like the perfect way to express. So um, I think that the key or maybe trying to answer a little, in a little bit more specific way, Aranza, how, how do you uh, find this, this element of uh, telling stories that don't identify that you haven't lived, I think that the answer is just like uh, listening with a lot of attention to what the other people is is living or has lived. Thank you, Jorge. Susan, I think you were going to add something. Please go ahead. Yes, um, first of all, I'll join others in expressing my gratitude for, um, for your work. Um, when Nigel uh, asked his question and you began to list all the things you were doing, I was overwhelmed. <laughs> I was, was so, um, uh, and delighted to know that you're planting so many seeds and, and how they're flourishing. Um, this is maybe more of a comment, but but perhaps you would want to elaborate in terms of how you made some of the choices. There's so much just showing without telling. There's there isn't a talking about, but a showing, and it seems like for me at least some of the most touching pieces are showing the depth of knowing that Jasmine had her her deep. Uh, humanity and understanding what's going on with her, her, her mother, and um, the ways in which uh, the father sort of keeps from the family the true experience that he's having. There's there's so much wisdom in the ways in which, um, at least the pieces you selected, and this is from from my point of view at least. There's so much wisdom that's that's demonstrated. Uh, by each of these people, so, so much inner knowledge of how how to be with one another, to preserve their love and care for one another. 
and um, maybe that was just in this in what you got from the narrative but I wanted to point to it and then ask if that was something that you were really um, consciously moving toward or if it just sort of came from what you got in the narrative um, as you recorded it from this members of this family. Thank you for your comment, Susan. Um, I have to say that we, we come from very different backgrounds, Jorge and I. Um, I've been directing and producing documentaries for over 15 years. And uh, I come from a family that has worked in the indigenous community for over 40 years. So when I was a kid and we went to these communities, I, I think I, I watched my parents uh, always listening to, to the stories of the families that they were you know, going to work with. They, they were educators, so they were not storytellers. They were not making documentaries, but they were making educational programs. And they were they needed to know what the communities wanted before they could start an educational program in that community. And I, I think that one of the things that I've been working on uh, for uh, at least the last two decades is uh, how do you make a conversation uh, really honestly? Uh, so that the other person can see that you are you really care and you really have uh, an honest curiosity about what the other person is telling you, and there's no way of 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 you know just um, like uh, I don't know I'm trying to look for the word in English. Uh, you can. You cannot lie about your intentions. Uh, you cannot lie about if you are interested in someone or you are not. You know, if you are really interested in someone, it, there it comes across, and that opens uh, a door of intimacy that someone would like to tell their story to you. And I think that. That has a lot to do in why the, the way that they are telling the stories is very intimate and one can feel uh, that intimacy coming into our own self. Um, that would be one of the answers that I could give to your comment. If I could just say, I really appreciate that so much because it's, there's so much more in communication than just the words, but um, we know when there's a, a, when there is a connection, and we can feel it in our bodies. We can feel it in the interaction, um, and I'm glad that you were able to tap into that in the work that you did because it it comes out then in the characters um, or the the animation of of the individuals in the story. It's very very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. And I just wanted to let you know that the word, previous work of Jorge and Carlos has been really uh, meaningful. And that uh, uh, at least uh, Jorge also has worked in human rights uh, uh, with animation, but Carlos has uh, uh, directed two previous uh, movies about emig e e immigrants. And one is Those Who Remains. And that's the story of the people who remains in the con in, in Mexico specifically when the families come to the United States. So it's the other point of view from there and here. So maybe later they can share us where can we uh, watch or consult your previous work. And another one about actually an American woman who went to Mexico and immigrated there. So it's the, the story of I mean, Miriam from the United States into Mexico and how it was. So they they have been working in from a different point of view about immigration. I, and I think we can see that in this movie because you can see that they have been approaching the topic from many years and from uh, a, a lot of different point of view from one side and to the um, from the other side. And I don't know if someone else want to open it's their mic or ask a question in the chat.
Yes, Brenda, yeah. please go ahead. So just to um, uh, Aranza's question made me think, you know, like how important it is for the people who are featuring the film to like be also be part of like the filmmaking process. And it's gonna be really cool to uh, see them in a panel as well, Lalo, and there was one other person. Um, when is that panel happening? And is it gonna happen uh, through Making Visible or where can, where can we plug in for that? Yeah, next uh, next month in Making Visible, you'll have Evelyn, uh, who's the protagonist of the second story, is one of the two protagonists of the story of the two sisters. And uh, she will be, now she will be speaking about her story and uh, we'll step down from, uh, from talking about our film. And I think that this will be kind of a move forward and I think that you will get uh, answers more directly about the, uh, how the experience of migration and the experience of family separation does feel. And uh, Lalo, we haven't uh, yet confirmed, but we are hoping that he'll confirm for October. Um, no, 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 November, November. And November. Next okay. next session is September 13, so you are all invited with Evelyn. So we we will watch her story, the story where she is one of the protagonists, and then she will be the speaker. And then Lalo, who is the mm -hmm. third story, and Lalo is also the person who started this movie, the 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 the, um, uh, the master of word. ceremonies and yeah. is a spoken word poet. Uh, spoken word for it. So we will have those experience. And I think Brenda uh, uh, and what you and Aranza were asking more is more how the actual people who really live this feel about a film like this and using these tools to, to share about their experience. So we will try to have that from, uh, I mean, we will give the space to Evelyn for her to share this, uh, her experience. And I don't know if someone else wants to uh, uh, quest, have a question or a comment, or if we just want to share everyone just like a phrase of a word of how are you feeling after this movie and uh, after this session, or what you have learned. That would be nice as well. We have in the chat, Nilu has shared Having many relatives who immigrated here to America, I found this film beautifully moving and talking about delicate sensibilities of immigrants in general. Mm. So if you want to, yeah, if you want to put in the chat how anything you, any reflections, you can do that too. I think that we can share also that uh, Brinka, which is our animation studio, uh, was was made uh, with the mission of talking about uh, what we call pertinent issues or relevant issues. Uh, we want to put animation as a language in the service of important issues because we we truly believe that animation is a way of getting more people interested in difficult that in subject matters that are difficult and, and that maybe otherwise uh, uh, this, uh, the audience of this important issue would be uh, you know, just around the circle of, um, of immediate interest to, to these issues. For instance, human rights issues, most of the people that see or watch uh, materials related to human rights are already people that are interested in human rights. And when you, when you use the potential of animation as a, as a tool for storytelling, I think that you create a broader impact. And this is why we created the studio. So we have been working with, with uh, different organizations with different subject matters. Uh, and we that's the mission of the studio has a lot to do with that. So also 
also if you think that you have um, a subject matter that you would like uh, uh, to have an animation uh, be able to potentiate communication uh, i think that brinca would be a place that we could help you with that and, and I also think that it, maybe Carlos and Jorge, you can you can share with or, or, or everyone here that if someone maybe wants to have a private screening of the movie, I don't know if there's a way, if, you, if they can share. I mean, uh, how can we approach the full movie and share with us? Because I think that's part of our work of, for all of us here, to spread the word of pieces of communication like this one who, who can, uh, that can bring people to understand this issue from a different point of view. So why don't you share with us how can we approach the movie or watch a movie? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think the, the main objective of doing this movie is trying to reach the wider audiences as, as we can because we, we think this is an important message to be shared. And uh, as Carlos said, we are planning all these screenings in universities and high schools, but it, it doesn't have to be a, a big event for the movie to be shown. We can we have shown the movie in in, in smaller uh, venues or in more private sessions. So I think I don't know if you can share or uh, our email with with them. Maybe you can, or if you want, I can put it here in the in the chat. Yes, and put it in course. the channel and we will also will send the after session email and we will put it there as well, but share, be, 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 yes. uh, feel free to share it there. Uh -huh. Sure, if someone wants to show the film in their school, in a group, uh, I, I mean, being in this group where uh, everything is around mindfulness is the first time we do that. Uh, most of the times our schools or or maybe more politicized events or more educational, but I think that it's very exciting to that the movie is like moving in so different spaces. And of course we are uh, open if you have a, if you want to share the movie, we, we can organize how to do it. But it, yes, sure, let me, uh, I'll put here the, the email. As an example of this, I would share with you that last year in the summer, we had a special screening at LULAC, which is the League of United Latin American US Citizens in Puerto Rico. And at the end of the screening, a 17 year old uh, came and said that it was very meaningful for her uh, to have watched this, that she felt related to the to her own story and she would like to organize a screening and i said yeah i mean this is if you write to me uh, an email and you talk to your school and you yourself organize that screening for sure we'll be there for the q a and four weeks after she wrote to us and she had already organized her school in oakland california and she made a screening for not only her, her schoolmates, but the parents and the teachers of the school. And it all came out of, you know, of her knowing that she could actually organize her own screening. So this is something that we will, uh, we will be open to. Uh, because this is the only way that we can make, have meaningful conversations around these subject matters. And I think that it's great for us to meet uh, a real audience that is actually watching the film. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos and Jorge. Annie, I don't know if you want to read the last comments on the chat. Yes, my dogs are barking. Can you hear them? Okay, they sound, okay. Uh, the last comments, and then I also want to say one thing, which is that you should be getting an email tomorrow morning to allow you to register for the next session. That's the plan. So um, Dot says, I feel privileged to have seen this portion of the film and to have been able to hear the documentary filmmakers talk about their processes and goals. A comment, I felt the animation of the parents being blown away was an extremely powerful evocation of Jasmine's fear. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yes. And then Camille says, so grateful for your beautifully animated film by sharing the stories of immigrant families. I feel like I was really able to understand more of the challenges and difficulties of the families and a beautiful way to connect us to others who have had such different experiences. And then Roseanne says, this was so beautifully and authentically expressed and so powerful to hear through the voice of a child. Thank you so much for your incredible work. And I would agree. I'm moved by your empathy and your, uh, your creative talents and being able to take something from a story and make it into something that can touch so many people. That's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Adriana? No, I think that's it. Thank you everyone for being here. I, I, it's, it, it's already 8.30 and it's time to close the session. If someone wants to open the mic to say goodbye, but if not, we usually find out. out. <laughs> Sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll leave it the recording on for the bell. Yes, let's have a final bell. I think that's a great idea. So from this time we've been together and the stories we've seen, may our practice flow out into the world and may what we've seen here help us to reach and care for more people and work and practice and live in such a way that all beings everywhere have ease and safety and freedom and that all beings everywhere may feel at home. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. I hope we can see you all.